Hi, everyone. My name is Le Zhi, and I'm a software engineer at Uber. So today, I'm going to talk about how we build a visual debugging tool for machine learning using TensorFlow.js. So why is model debugging important? Machine learning practitioners report that they spend the majority of their time not on building a model, but instead on iterating and debugging of an uh, existing model. So there's huge opportunity for us to improve the efficiency for, of the 80% of the time. Traditionally, uh, the only guidance for, mo for, model, debugger, for model developers to uh, evaluate the model performance is by looking at performance metrics. Although these metrics are useful, they do not give too much insight into how to improve on the model or why a model performs in a certain way. So given the intrinsic capacity of machine learning algorithms, it is very hard for anyone who, who wants to try to understand the model performance. So how do we solve the problem? The idea is here is that we can transform a model space problem into a data space problem. And by that, we mean that instead of asking what went wrong with a model, we look at on which data did this model make mistakes. And instead of asking why a model makes certain mistakes, we look into the feature characteristics of these failed data points. So uh, based on those two ideas, we develop Manifold, which is a model agnostic visual debugger for machine learning. Here's a workflow of using Manifold. The user will connect Manifold to the output data set of several machine learning outcomes. And Manifold will automatically segment this data set into subsets, each subset containing data points with similar performance with each other. The users would choose the subsets of their interest to compare against each other. And Manifold would highlight the feature distribution difference of these two different subsets and helping them to diagnose the behavior of the performance outcome. So uh, while we developed these ideas into production, we faced several technology challenges. And among them, there's a performance challenge and also portability challenge. So um, traditionally, it is the model training backend's job to handle the uh, performance metric calculation. But that pattern is no more applicable to our visual uh, interface because of the latency introduced by the recalculation in the response to the user interaction. And also, if you want to connect Manifold to another machine learning training backend, there are two pieces of code we need to port out, the backend code and the frontend code. Um, but in reality, the model calculation, the metrics calculation logic actually belong to the visual tool and should not be injected into the training backend. Those two reasons justify we put this computation logic inside of front end. And because this computation could get intensive as the data volume increases, that's why we use TensorFlow.js to help us increase the computation efficiency. So what are the intensive computation involved in this manifold interface? In a performance comparison view, we compute the performance scores for each data point on each model and use those metrics to run the k-means clustering to segment this data set into subsets. And in the feature attribution view, for each feature, we compute the distribution histograms of the two different subsets. And using those histograms to compute KL divergence to rank the feature importance for model developers to uh, inspect the model performance. And in all of those scenarios, TensorFlow.js gave us a lot of performance boosting compared to plain JavaScript implementation. And in some cases, the performance boosting can be as high as 100 times uh, for the per instance model metrics computation. So to conclude, complex tasks such as machine learning diagnosis can benefit a lot from numerical computation capacity of TensorFlow.js. And TensorFlow.js opens up new opportunities for developers of visual analytics tools. OK, uh, that's it. Thank you.